If you've ever tried to lose weight, maybe you've tried a fad diet. For example, the keto diet. Did you know it was actually developed for patients with epilepsy? Keto actually was invented, I guess you would say, for epilepsy. It has been found to help people with epilepsy, but kind of the general population has taken, taken it and kind of ran with it. Keto is a low-carb, high-fat diet, and many will lose weight. You will probably lose weight on it, but it's not sustainable. We definitely need carbs to sustain normal brain function and energy levels and a lot of other things as well. And this is where Eva says any fad diet can fail. We see fad diets usually that restrict either one food or one food group. And that's where it can kind of get unhealthy because we need all those things from each of the food groups to, to have a balanced diet. There are some reasons a person might be encouraged to try what is seen as a fad diet. I get a lot of patients that deal with, um, you know, like joint pain, um, you know, heart health, diabetes, um, some different chronic diseases like that. So they are looking for something, you know, quick that can relieve their symptoms. Or maybe the patient has celiac disease and requires a gluten-free diet, which is not a fad, but can be confused for one. People kind of assume that's a fad diet right now because there's so much stuff branded and labeled as gluten-free. One diet that is both popular and sustainable for health benefits, the Mediterranean diet. It actually has some good research behind it supporting its benefits specifically with heart health. And I like it because it doesn't necessarily restrict any of the food groups. It more focuses on getting your fruits and vegetables in, um, your whole grains, your lean proteins, plant proteins. So it's not restricting one of those big food groups, but kind of adding some of the good stuff in. In the end, if you want to lose weight, feel better, or be healthier, it really comes down to more than what you eat. It is hard, you know, when we're talking or I'm counseling patients on how to eat better. Behavior change is hard for everyone, you know, especially habits. When they are ingrained in us for so many years, it's hard to kind of backtrack um, off of those. Um, our environment, our family, support system, work schedule, all kind of goes into what we eat.